Chapter 5. What's after Tuesday? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday. They woke up on Wednesday to a day of bright sunshine. I am going shopping. I may be a while, said Lulu's mother, climbing into the car. What kind of shopping? asked Melly. Secret shopping, said Lulu's mother. And, Lulu, and to Lulu she whispered, Operation Kite. Then she bumped away down the dusty road with Sam to keep her company. Lulu and Melly and Lulu's father headed for the beach. It was a much easier hey. journey <clears throat> over the sand dunes without Sam and his bean bag. <laughs> Lulu's father went swimming and Lulu and Melly went to the kiddie pool. However, no one stayed in it long because as Lulu's father pointed out, the sea was very close to freezing and if it froze over completely, they'd be stuck in the ice. Afterward, Lulu, is that true? Mm -hmm. Afterward, Lulu and Melly <laughs> went off to play while Lulu's father did some exercises to get rid of the numbness in his hands and feet. Lulu and Melly had not been playing for more than five minutes when a head with paper bag ears looked over the sand dunes. Really? The dog from the sea had come to play too. At first, he just played beside them. When Lulu and Melly raced after the frisbee, the dog from the sea raced after an invisible frisbee of his own. Is it? When they peered into rock pools, he peered into rock pools close by. Is it? When they paddled in the pools, which were, which were much warmer than the sea, the dog paddled too, sneezing at the splashes. And then they got out two bottles of bubbles. The dog from the sea could not resist the bubbles. He raced to catch them, snapping at them in the air, and looked astonished when they what? vanished. He loved when Lulu <coughs> and Melly laughed at him. His tail wagged and his paper bag ears flapped, and he bounded like a dog on springs. That's cute. Like a I dog made my ears squeak. <laughs> I heard it. When Lulu's mother arrived with Sam and his bean bag and a thumbs up sign from Lulu and a hug from Melly and a picnic and a handful of dripping ice cream, the dog from the sea did not run away. He stayed and shared the picnic. He's like, he didn't come very close. He didn't quite trust Lulu's parents not to be secret dog catchers, but still he stayed. If Sam had been worn out by shopping, he would not have let this happen. But shopping had tired Sam completely. He lay down on his bean bag <laughs> and closed his eyes bean. so that he could not see the dog from the sea. With the frisbee as a plate, eating hot dogs and sandwiches and drinking water from Lulu's bucket. Now said Lulu's mother when the picnic was all finished. You'll never guess what I bought this morning, Melly. What? A build-your-own kite kit, just like the one you had, said Lulu's mother triumphantly. What's that mean, triumphantly? Mm. <laughs> Happily. Yeah, like she won, right? So now we have all the pieces and new strings with no knots. And the paper instructions. Proper. Proper instructions. Oh, gasped Millie, hugging her. Was that what you thought of Lulu last night? I told you I'd help, said Lulu proudly. And her father said, come on, back to the cottage, everyone, for Operation Kite. Operation Kite took Lulu's parents and Millie, Millie all afternoon. And except for the seagull pitcher on the front, it was a brand new kite. It's the pitcher on the front that matters, said Melly cheerfully. Lulu did not help with the kite making. Instead, she spent the afternoon on the grassy patch outside the house, playing with the dog from the sea. It was very, very and different. Did she say she would help? She did by getting having her mother buy a brand new mm. kit, right? Mm -hmm. And she did help paint seagulls. 
It was very, very different. It was very different from playing with Sam. If you threw a ball for Sam to fetch, he would try not to look, unless you happened to be someone he loved very much. <laughs> he bet. If you were, he, he would get slowly to his feet. Slowly, slowly, he would walk to the ball, <laughs> pick it up in his teeth, as if it tasted nasty. And then slowly bring it back to you, spit it out, and sigh. The sigh meant, please don't do that again. I will not fetch it twice. <laughs> Very different from the dog from the sea, who hurled, who hurtled after the ball so fast he skidded and rolled in somersaults, who could catch a frisbee within his teeth, who understood the game of tag and played it around and around the little white cottage. Lulu and the dog from the sea played so hard, they didn't notice the cottage owner coming silently along the path to the cottage. The cottage owner liked to visit the cottage now and then to check that her guests were behaving as she thought they should behave, just in case they weren't. Lulu wasn't. Nice. What do you think? Oh boy. Halfway along the path, the cottage owner saw Lulu and the dog from the sea. She paused. She got off her bike. She glared. She puffed with fury. Then she turned around and rode off again as quickly as she could to call the dog catchers. The dog catchers came quickly with a cage, a long stick with a collar on the end, and a handful of dog biscuits, and the cottage owner following behind took Lulu a little while to understand what was happening. At first she thought, at first she just stood and stared, her hand on the neck of the dog from the sea. Then she saw the van and the collar on a stick and the cottage owner, very eager, rushing up with her bike. Lulu screamed and clutched the dog from the sea. That's right, hang on to him, screeched the cottage owner. While from inside the cottage ran Lulu's parents and Melly and Sam barking, ruff, ruff, ruff. Please, stand still, please, begged one of the, do the two dog catchers. Oof. That was the sound made when Melly flung herself head first into the nearest dog catcher's stomach. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Melly, exclaimed Lulu's mother, grabbing her. <laughs> ruff, 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 roared Sam as the at the dog catchers and the cottage owner and at the dog from the sea, trembling with fear under Lulu's hand. Get that dog, shouted the wicked witch of the of a cottage owner. He's a thief. He's a menace. He needs to be locked up again. No, shouted Lulu, and she stopped holding on to the dog from the sea. She pushed him away and cried, run. There had been two friends playing, <laughs> blue, green grass, and a blue and white sky. Now there was Kay. noise and trouble and anger, and the dog from the sea was gone, running for his life. That night, Lulu waited and waited, but the dog from the sea did not come to visit the cottage. Do you think he's thinking of me like I am thinking of him? She asked Melly. Yes, said Melly. Much later in the night, Melly said, I think you should stop climbing in and out of the window. I can't get to sleep. No one can get to sleep. Oh, said Melly. <laughs> said Melly. If they, if they kept climbing in and out of the window, why are you sad? demanded Lulu. I am sad, said Nellie, about the poor dog from the sea. I'm sad about how frightened he was and how he looked at you to see if it was true and how he saw that it was true and ran. I'm sad about that. I helped, didn't I? I charged that dog catcher as hard as I could. Yes, you did, admitted Lulu. <laughs> But I'm not completely sad because I can't help feeling happy about my kite. I thought we'd never fix it, and now we have, and it's perfect. Don't you think that's good? <laughs> you know I do, said Lulu. 
It was me that thought of the way to fix it. Tomorrow, said Mally, we can fly my kite on the beach. It will, sh it will show for miles and miles. The dog will see it and come running. That was a happy thought. Lulu fell asleep thinking it.